Give you an O. Give you an H, give you an O, give you an R, give you an S, and give you an E, and that spells horse racing here on Horsepower PSN. Uh, we have a big Saturday, of course, coming up with the Haskell, so can't wait uh, to talk about that. We're also going to handicap the race before the Haskell uh, here on YouTube. That's the United Nations, uh, excuse me, the United Nations Stakes Race. That's a grade two. Uh, and then our bonus race, which is going to be only on Patreon, uh, that is actually going to be race number 10 at Monmouth Park, and that is the Monmouth Cup Stakes. That is a grade three race. So that's what's coming up here today. How's it going, fellas? Good. Thanks for uh, uh -huh. rushing in from uh, your training duties uh, to uh, get the show in, Chad. Appreciate it. Yeah, just try and get out there as early as we can for the, uh, for the viewers. And that's always great. And the viewers have been great. Uh, our subscriber base is uh, slowly making progress. Uh, and again, we want to make sure that everybody subscribes to this channel here on YouTube. Uh, and if you can't, uh, especially, I should say, if you cannot afford the $5 for whatever reason on our Patreon. Uh, matter of fact, we did two races last week on Patreon. Uh, one race, excuse me, on Patreon and one race on YouTube. Uh, and uh, we, we hit both races last week. Uh, and I want to uh, play this uh, clip from last. This is a clip from last week. This was uh, race number nine. This is what we did on Patreon. This was uh, this is an optional claiming race that we did, and we were talking about the old, the old, the uh, eventual winner of the race, Taking Candy, uh, who was trained by Sherry Devereaux, and uh, this is what Chad uh, had to say regarding uh, the trainer. Let me put it up here. So everybody can see. There we go. And the horse uh, won, Chad. So, uh, by the way, this is some of the stuff that you miss when you're not on Patreon. So, uh, yeah, she did it once again, Chad. That's yeah, up the stats to 28%. And uh, look forward to seeing the next one that runs back off a six month layoff. I'm sure there'll be plenty <laughs> more. All right. Uh, that was an unbelievable year, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. So, uh, and then looking, looking, looking to uh, continue uh, when we talk about race ten at Monmouth. Correct. Unfortunately, oh. that horse isn't coming off a six month layoff. All right. Uh, so, uh, and then in race ten last week, that was the Grade One Diana, uh, Chad. Uh, this was the one that you hit with White Beam, uh, who was the defending champ of the race, and the horse actually went off at nine to two, a little bit better than the morning line odds of four to one. Um, just missed out on the exacta, but uh, Chad, uh, we breaking down the race. You talked about one of the reasons you liked White Beam, and one of the reasons you didn't want to go with some of the closers was because of this being a paceless race, which is exactly what it was. Yeah, I mean, sometimes that's what handicapping does. I mean, you know, you, 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 you it, it's it's funny because look, there's there's a thousand different ways to handicap, and there's no right or wrong way. I mean, people have have made a lot of money doing a lot of different things, but uh, for me, I like to kind of look at races and analyze races from a, a trainer's perspective, from an owner's perspective, from a jockey's perspective, from the horse's kind of perspective. Look at how, you know, it's just, there's a lot. To me, it's, you know, I I love horse racing because it's like a Sudoku puzzle. And it's you're not always going to get it, but, you know, sometimes, you know, the, you're able to see things kind of clearly, and that's what it looked like in the Diana. Whether White Beam is the best horse, if they run 10 times, I don't know. But to me, the way that race went, it, it, it dictated perfectly. And when you got a guy riding as well as Flavian Pratt's riding right now, and, and you give him that little, that little, sometimes the rider just needs that little, that little edge and that edge of, of, of making a clear lead. You can, you know, you can go faster, but it's just, you're not being pressured. 
and, and that's exactly what happened in the race. White Beam was able to kind of dictate terms. Um, you know, they, they took back, which we thought that they might with EV Jets, and, you know, try to see out the distance of a mile and eighth. I thought Moira ran really, really good off the layoff, but, you know, had to settle for second best and, you know, did the dirty work of, of having a chase. But, you know, congratulations to White Beam, and, and congratulations to Chad Brown, because he likes these big races. He doesn't like those little uh, unimportant races. So good for Chad Brown winning the Diana for the eighth time. He had five of the ten horses in the race. <laughs> All right, so we're going to. Uh, I still think that should have been a that, that should have been a, a a bet. Chad Brown or the field. Yeah. You, you oh. make Chad Brown one to two. You get the field two to one, and people would have bet it. I agree. Like, I mean, these these pro, and this isn't the first time we've talked about this, Greg. And you know, when you look at the at the at these these things that take off in Vegas, and now sports gambling is legal all these different places. I mean. I, John, your your son your son wanted uh, Shotan Otani to hit the first home run in the All Star game. You know, you, you can get any kind of any kind of prop now. There was a price there. on that. What was the price <laughs> on that? Nine to one. He got it. Um, he should pay for dinner tonight. He but, didn't, but tell, at, didn't tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> but at the at, at the uh, at the end of the day, right? Like, this is the, this is the problem with our sport, and we complain about about the computer wagering we complain about so many things we're horse horse racing uh players at the core love to complain about everything but why not embrace the rest of the 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 rest of the sports world and start offering these prop wagers that diana would have been a perfect perfect time to do it you have chad brown or the field and you give the field two to one three to one you give chad brown you have five five against five it's a fair it's a the first time ever to be a fair fight i i think it would have been a lot of fun and i think we're missing out by not by not embracing the the 21st century of sports gambling. That is a great question. Would right. you, would you, John, John, would you would you because you're you're a, a, an old horse player, curmudgeon. You like things the way they are. Would you embrace? Would you would you place uh, some of these prop wagers if, if they yeah. were offered in horse racing? If I thought I had an edge, why well, not? here, like here, but you, like you've done this before, right? Every now and again, there'll be a few sites yeah. that offer matchups. Yeah. Right, a horse for horse, wherever they finish, it doesn't matter if they win. They can run eighth or ninth, and the, yes, and the horse yes. wins. You don't have I, to. I, I, think, I think I think they're great. I agree. I think with they're you. great. I agree. With well, you. I'll have to ask Mark Lawrence, our resident. Well, put, ex- it on, put it on. And put it on the. Put it on the ticker. Put it on the. Put it on the thing. I, ask the question to our. Uh, Who's going to say no to that? Patreon and YouTube uh, people. See what they say. Well, here's one, though. What, what, What prop would you like to see? Give us some props that you'd like to see them offer up. We just gave you one. Can we start handicapping? Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, say goodbye to our YouTube audience just for a little bit. Actually, it's only going to seem like a half a second, uh, but we're going to go away. Uh, Our Patreon members, though, get to see it all, including our race, uh, which is going to kick off the uh, video here, race number 10. So uh, we'll see you guys uh, on the other side at YouTube. Okay. All right, so we are back. See you in... I told you it wouldn't take us too long to get back here on YouTube as we uh, just uh, broke down the race, race number 10 at Monmouth Park on Patreon. You got the link in the description. You can sign up right now for only $5 a month, and you can cancel at any time, and uh, that's just a great deal. Uh, Also, uh, don't forget, if you, uh, for whatever reason, can't do it, you can subscribe here on YouTube. And we're trying to get that subscriber base up to 1,000. So we still have a ways to go. All right. Where are we? How far, how far are we? I think we still have a little bit over 400 to go. What? <laughs> yeah. So we've got to get going here with the subscribers. Uh, all right. Remember, if if we get up to 1,000, all of these shows, including that 10th that you missed on Patreon, is available here on YouTube for free. So that's what you get. Don't miss out on subscribing. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do races 11 and 12 here. We're going to start with race 11, of course, and that is the United Nations Grade 2 Stakes, uh, $600,000 purse for three-year-olds and up. There are four trainers in this field that have two horses each. So uh, it's a big field, though, 12. And... By, the way, by the way, Greg, there's a horse in this race that Chad gave out on this show That's the last right. time he ran at 35-1 to 1 that finished in a dead heat for Washington. I don't know how he saw the seven coming, but the horse ran a seven that day. Congratulations to Chad. 35 to one. You don't get that on many shows. And I believe that was a pick on Patreon as well. well. So you missed that one. Uh, But we told everybody 
Uh, yes, uh, that was uh, the Dead Heat. Those are horses, uh, by the way, uh, five and six, I believe. They're both eight to one, Fort Washington and Running B uh, in that Dead Heat rematch. Uh, who might both bounce in this one? But we'll get into that in just a little bit. Uh, the morning line favorite is the 12 at 4-1 to one Farbridge. But this is a wide open race. When you have a 4-1 to one as a Farbridge favorite. Farbridge is the favorite? Yeah, 4-1. Yeah, four four. to one. That's crazy. In a 12-horse wow. field, then it's Breaking wide open. Who makes the morning line? The, the, a booster for the LSU program? Is the LSU oh, I think the guy with the glasses. What's his name? Um, Brad, Brad, uh, Brad, yeah, Brad, 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 Brad what's, yes. Brad huh? Thomas? Hey, yes, that's it. Chad, how, did, how is he the favorite? Yeah, I have well. no idea. That horse is, wouldn't be on one of my tickets. <laughs> he's right, right, and he's at the 12th position too. How yeah. how is the uh, the track uh, for inside and outside posts? Mom well, you Park. have to want to be outside. Uh, you know, I'm going. I mean, it's a smaller. It's a smaller track, right? So yeah. I mean, if you're breaking on the outside, you're probably you're breaking dead. close to the rail. I yeah. mean, close to the turn. I, okay. He's going to hang, hang hung out very very wide. Who's riding? Him? Oh, by the way, the second choice is the ten Web Slinger at nine to two. Jose Ortiz is on Far Bridge. Web Slinger has Louis Sayers. And Far Bridge is with who now? Uh, okay. We mean trainer wise. Yeah, Clement. He went back to Clement, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's uh, start with uh, uh, several long shots, John. We'll start from the top. Grand Sonata's at 15-1. to 1. You get Pletcher. This is one of two horses for Pletcher. As a matter of fact, he's got the first and the second horses. Grand Sonata at 15-1. to 1. Emmanuel at 10-1. to 1. Uh, Which one of these two long shots do you prefer? Well, Grand Sonata never puts two races together if you look at his sheets. I mean, an eight is a top for this horse, and he's uh, five years old. So I would say he's probably reacting. But again, he's 15-1. to 1. Who was the other horse he had in? Emmanuel, ten to one. Yeah, I like this horse much better than Emmanuel. Emmanuel, you know, is not the same horse that he was last year, or even first start back this year. His last two races were both terrible. He did have trouble in his last race. I don't know. I got to go watch the replay. How bad the trouble was. So he would have to go back to the way he was. And I think at fifteen to one, I would much rather use the one than the two. The one at least did it at Monmouth. Chad, who would you prefer? <clears throat> Well, Emmanuel is one of my favorite horses, and I have no idea what they're doing. He wants to go a mile. He wants to go a mile. I don't know why they're running a mile in three A's. I don't, I don't know. I like, at least Grand Sonata can see the distance. He was eighth beaten a length and three quarters last time. I, I, I'll i take Grand Sonata over Emmanuel just because of the distance. Emmanuel's a better horse, but I don't think he wants to go this far. Four grade three wins for Emmanuel, but as John, as you pointed out, uh, that was uh, definitely uh, part of last year, which was a really good year, 2023 for Emmanuel. Not so good this year, eight and then two twelves. Okay, uh, let's talk about the three who I think is an interesting long shot, Get Smoking, and that's because of the fact that he has improved over his last four races on turf. The synthetic race was the first race that he returned from last year. That happened last month. That was a 10, but again, that's on a synthetic track. So on turf, John, it's 13, 11, 11, and a 9. Those are the last four. Uh, and uh, what do you think? This, by the way, Mark Case, this is one of two horses for him in this Cassie. field. Mark Casey. 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 Uh, what Cassie. Do you Cassie? Yes. Cassie. I'll have to write that down. Okay. No, the problem with this horse, Greg, is that he's seven years old. I don't like this horse at all. Le and guess what? You're going to need better than a 10 or an 11. He has one to nine last year. You need a single digit. You have horses in this race that are the same price or longer that have single digits. Why would I want to go for this horse? Chad? Yeah, I mean... Look, it's, he it was scratched in the Breeders' Cup. He doesn't want to win. He tries every time. Love the horse. He's a trier. He came back off the layoff. He did what he always does. He tries, but he's not. He doesn't win. I, I still don't know how he won a Kentucky Downs. I'd imagine they're prepping to try and get him back to Kentucky Downs, which is a huge spot. I just I think he's out the best. The, and, and he's not going to be left alone because so high yeah, off his yeah. uh, third in the $40,000 claimer will be chasing him every step of the way. 
Uh, the next three are all eight to one shots, and that is the four, five, and six. We mentioned Fort Washington, the five, running B, the six. Those are the two dead heat horses in the Mammoth Stakes last month. They both ran sevens, uh, and those are new tops. Actually, it was a new top Fort Washington. But the previous race was a 17. Uh, Running B had run a 7. But the last time Running B ran a 7, last November, he bounced to a 10 and finished 8th. So, you know, that's the the reason those things uh, matter. By the way, Adamo, John, uh, which is the 4 horse, is coming off an 8. He's got two 8s in the last three races. This horse actually is is the winner of this race back in 2022. Actually, I loved this horse last time out when Chad loved Fort Washington. Chad was right. I was wrong. But my horse did run a number that was good enough. Unfortunately, this is another one that doesn't really put races together. Last year, 7-10. This year, 8-10. And now he's coming off of an 8. Chances are he's going to regress or bounce back to that uh, 10. Yeah, his average finish in the last eight races is 6.8. So uh, his his sheets are better than his uh, results, that's for sure. Sheet numbers. Uh, Chad, Mm -hmm. what about these three horses? Which one? Uh, four, five, and six. Adamo, Fort Washington, your big long shot pick, and Running B. So Running B shouldn't have a one next to his name because he lost last time. He did. Uh, <laughs> Fort Washington, I think, is going to reg- is going to bounce off that big effort, and uh, I've given Adamo too many chances. Okay. By the way, by the way, I like Running B. I, I thought we were only talking about Adamo, but go ahead. So no. Why, why do you like Running B? Because Running B ran the seven last time out, where Fort Washington is definitely going to react. Running B has the seven last year and then has excuses off of the seven. Okay. He bounced to the 10 on a soft turf. And this year, the first two races, both of those 11s were paceless races. And two starts back, he ran on that double dot soft turf on uh, Preakness Day, where the, they should have never run on the turf. So I'm reading it as 7 7. And I think this horse has a shot to repeat or make a forward move. And it's Chad Brown, again, coming out of a paceless race last time out. I think this horse is going to repeat. And at 8-1, to one, this is my bet in the race. This is, by the way, those three horses we just mentioned, two of them trained by Chad Brown, Adamo, and Running B. All right, now let's get to the seven. This is another long shot that, uh, uh, you know, if you look at his numbers, it's not totally bad. He's got back-to-back tens. So you definitely need a new top here. Uh, but the 10, one of those 10s was at Monmouth Park last time out, won the race. He's actually won the last two races and four of the last six. What about Data Man, the seven, John? Well, he's a four-year-old. He's allowed to get better. He's five for 12 lifetime. He's one for one at Monmouth. Uh, he's not the worst idea in the world because he's steady. He always runs a number. You know, he doesn't go 8-12 or 10-12 or 10-13. This guy just gets better. 11, 10, 10. Certainly could run the 10 or better. He's a four-year-old, and nothing wrong with using this horse at eight, at 10 to 1. I'll use him with John's money. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but Chad is just ripping every horse in this race so far, so can't wait to find out when he when, who he likes. Uh, so high, this shouldn't even be in the race, right? So no. high? Yeah. And this is going to be Chad's top pick. Uh, no. Uh, all right. The nine is Tawny Port. Uh, the six to one shot. This is one of the Clement horses, Clement horses. Uh, F- uh, Pratt on board. Last three races, 13, 12, and nine. That's exactly what you want to see. Um, hasn't won at this distance, though. 0 for 3, 0 for 1 at Monmouth. Uh, but you're getting six to one, which is pretty fair. John, what about Tawny Port? Well, when he runs a race, he usually reacts. Last year, 10 13. This year, 10 13. Now you were in the nine last time out. Are you supposed to run the thir- excuse me the thirteen? I think this is my best bet of the weekend. Okay, a best bet of the weekend. Weekend. Wow, I love, I love it. This horse. I like Rendon. He's a great, good rider. Huge switch. This horse screams. He is a good rider. He's a very this horse good rider. Flavian Pratt. Flavian Pratt's gonna fit this horse like a glove, and if the glove fit, you, you must, must quit. You must oh, bet. It doesn't fit. <laughs> It fits. You must put him in the winner's circle. Six hey. to one is a gift. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this horse to pop. I'm all in on Tony Port on seven. All right. Love to hear that, especially at six to one. 
Uh, all right, now let's uh, move on to the last uh, few horses, and two of them are the favorites, uh, and that is the, the 10 Web Slinger at 9-2. to two. Um, th This is the horse that I actually like the most just because of the fact that, unlike For Far Bridge, who has the 1-9, Web Slinger this year has three nines and a 7. So I know he's outside, but at least he's a little closer. He's 10th. Uh, one for one at Mammoth. So uh, what about Web Slinger, John? I bet him in every one of those nines and seven that he lost. So I hate this horse just as a horse. So we're not friends because unless <laughs> I didn't bet him and he beat me. Well, so there you go. I so, had enough of him. I okay. mean, obviously off the numbers he fits. So I trained for that iron horse race that no one's get smoking. We ran against Web Slinger as a two-year-old in a maiden auction that cost $50,000 or less. And we both lost that day to Kevin Rice, Adam Rice, one of them. And Web Slinger's got on to win a grade one, and my horse is running at Gulfstream Park for two light. I think <laughs> Web Slinger is a nice horse, but I've never been a huge, huge fan. And I just like I like a few others more in the race. All right, I'm not sure I heard anything you just said. Can you, can you repeat some of that? that the the merry-go-round was, was happening here. That's all good. Okay. Uh, so that's Web Slinger. Starting over is a six to one shot in the 11 post, seven year old, coming off a win in a grade two race at Gulfstream. Ran a 10 there, John. Ran an eight the race before that. He's like seven other horses in the race. The only thing is, he's not long and he's outposted. Other than that, you know, you can play him. I don't like him. Uh, Chad? I agree. And then Far Bridge, four to one. This is the Morning Line favorite, 11 11 9. That's uh, that's what he's looked like so far this year. Uh, got a really good trainer who's hot right now in this uh, short short meet so far. Uh, nine out of ten in the money, but he's way outside at four to one, John. Yeah, I mean you're looking at numbers. You have a sheets for a reason. Uh, this horse at four to one, you have to play against. I what would think. you like? What would you guys like Far Bridge at? Because fourteen uh, to one. If he's if he's drawn inside, I'd give him a shot. But from that post, he's just too tough for me to bet at a short price. So if he's eight to one, ten to one, would you take him? Yeah, but he's not going to be eight to one or ten to one because that never happens with this horse. Against Farbridge, he went off seventy cents to the dollar three races back. So I don't okay. know how you're going to squeeze uh, ten to one out of him, but you can well, try. Was the last yeah. two races, he was eighteen and nine. Okay. So, but those are great ones. All right. Uh, John, your top pick is the six, correct? Yes, running B. Exact is with the one, Grand Sonata, the four, and Damo. And uh, let's throw in Chad's nine, Tony Port. Six with one, four, nine. Chad? Best bet of the year, he told you. Yes, he did. The, not the year. The weekend. <laughs> oh, the weekend. I'm sorry. Weekend. Please not forgive. the year. Tony Port. Tony Port. Any exact is here? Yeah, play with whatever you want. Play so, with whoever you he's six, want. He's six, he's six to one. He's six to one. It's gonna be a blanket finish, and the the photo finish guy, mom is terrible. We've learned this in the dead heat. So, I don't want to. I don't. I just want to bet to win. And if he dead heats, then I'll take my half money. Well, your half of money with Fort Washington paid off a lot better than your half of money will with Tony Fort. So, let's hope there's no dead heat this time. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead then and take the ten, and I will throw in the seven and the nine and my exactors. So. Hold on, you got Tevix? Ten over seven nine. And you have you're going with the ten. Yep. Oh, okay. Ten with who? Seven nine. Okay, very good. And now, drum roll. The big race at Monmouth Park for twenty twenty four. The grade one Haskell, a mile and eighth. Million dollar race for three year olds. This should go off about quarter to six. I would <coughs> guess this gets network TV. Will this get network TV? I hope so. Uh, all right. Anyway, race number twelve. And you've got the morning line uh, favorite uh, duo of Doorknock and Fierceness, both at five to two. Mind right, frame. So we got we got to clean some things up here quickly. So Fierceness and Mind Frame are not both going to run. Okay. Oh. One okay. will. One's going to the Jim Dandy next Mind, week. Mind Frame is, is the likely runner. There is a chance that Mind Frame scratches. And they run fierceness. The horses have to be on the grounds by Friday. 
whoever the the Twitter people are on on the Mammoth and maybe daily, you know, daily racing forum, whatever, we'll know on Friday. But one of them will run, and one of them will not. Okay, so just keep that okay. in mind. Okay, either fierceness or mind frame will not run in Correct. the Haskell. Okay. Correct. So let's start with those two. That is according then. to my sources. Let's, uh, if, 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 okay, if one of the two are in the race, John, what do you think? Well, Fierce's, we just talked about that horse in the other race regarding the fact that he's up and he's down and he's up and he's down. And we warned everybody that Fierce's would be down in the Kentucky Derby. That's exactly what he was. He ran a 20 in that race. So now he's back on the ups, right? No. Nope. Yeah, I like either, whichever one decides to run, that's the one I'm betting. And that, oh, wow. Because if Fierceness runs, I think he can't lose, and I'd like Mind Frame better than Door Knock going in. So, what I don't like is I don't understand why they make Mind Frame the favorite over Door Knock. Door Knock beat him last time out. You know, that didn't make sense to me, but, uh, you know, I don't believe that Mind Frame will be that big a favorite over Door Knock, even if he is the favorite. But I like either one of the Pletcher horses. I think uh, he's coming to play. Yeah, fierceness uh, with the, his three good races, seven and two fives, winning the Florida Derby and the Breeders' Cup Juvie at, with fives. Mind Frame is coming off a six, losing to Doorknock, who ran, by the way, a seven, right? So, yep. Matt, Mind Frame had a better sheet number than Doorknock in the Belmont, even though Doorknock won the Belmont Stakes. Well, Mind Frame was wide. He got credit for being wide. The other horse went wide to wire. Uh, certainly, he was inside. So that's, Mind that's, Frame also got lost going through the Taconic. Yeah, he was he was like a drunken sailor at the top of the stretch. But well, he's only had three. That was only his third race. So that's that's what yeah. happens. You know, we'll, we'll see it. if he's learned anything. Depending if he, what about you, Chad? If uh, wh whoever ends up racing in this race, are, are you on fierceness or Mind Frame? I don't think Fierceness runs. I still don't think Fierceness ever runs again. But oh. um, it's cute to think of what might happen. I've always thought that Irad Ortiz would end up on Fierceness, so maybe this is his chance to finally get on him. Um, he breathed with more purpose last week. You know, since the Belmont States, they've been breezing very, very lightly with Mind Frame. They haven't been asking for much. He's been recovering from the Belmont Stakes. Fierceness needed to show something because he worked so bad with Mind Frame going into the Belmont Stakes. I just look at Mind Frame. This could be his coming out party. He could be the next big thing. I just I don't love how they they haven't been really like pushing the envelope a little bit. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. We'll see. Well, who do you like between those two horses? Going over the horses? Yeah, he's he's not even oh. going to talk about Fierceness. Oh, okay. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, as far as door knock, again, in case you haven't been with us uh, before, keep in mind that after he won the Fountain of Youth, uh, the trainer decided to, I'm going to try something ridiculously stupid, and the bluegrass was bad. Then he well, went it's to. It's not stupid. You have to learn. And he had the, the luxury of um, having the points to get in the derby, and he wanted to see if the horse can take dirt. It, was, it wasn't a bad idea. It's just sometimes you have a game plan and it doesn't work. And then. Uh, Gets the one post in the Kentucky Derby, and you know how that turned out. Uh, but then he gets uh, a regular race, and maybe they went back to strategy, uh, the old strategy that paid off, and they did with a seven in the win at Belmont. So what about door knock, John? I missed a 17 to one. I'm not taking five to two. I think he's reacting off of the set. All right, let's take a look at the rest of the field. Uh, the two is a, is a huge long shot at 30 to 1. The good thing is is he's improved in his last five races, all at Monmouth Park. Unfortunately, his best race, his last race, was only at 12. But maybe this is a horse you get lucky in a trifecta with, and it'll p pick up the money, you know, and, uh, you know, maybe. He's got zero chance. He has six starts. He's never been more than six furlongs. Now you're asking him to go a mile and eighth against these horses? I don't think so. All right, I'll, okay. co I'll continue. Yes. Yes. Tuscan Sky. Big disappointment with Tuscan Sky in the Wood Memorial, that's for sure. What happened in the Wood Memorial? Uh, what's the excuse? Does he have one, John? Uh, well, I don't know. Why you look for it? We've, been all, we've, we've done this 17 times. The loose horse. The oh, loose yeah. Horse that's that first fell, of all. That fell in front of him. Yeah, I mean, uh, he had big trouble in that race. That you could draw a line through that race. That that race meant nothing. No, right. I, uh, yeah. Again, you know, not not everybody returns here to the show. These we've got a lot of new viewers each he, week. 
He could run a new tie. He could run an eight off of this line. He's not impossible. All right. So his line with, if you draw a line through that one, is 10-8-10. That's yeah. not that bad for a horse uh, with only four starts, but he's nine to two. All right. Uh, Timberlake. What about Timberlake? You're getting eight to one on Timberlake. Timberlake has a grade one champagne win, a grade two rebel win. Uh, another another horse that alternates alternates wins in every other race and sheets in six of seven races, which means to me that he's going to run well, maybe even win as, a, as an upset, and uh, the sheet number should be good. So I kind of like Timberlake in that respect. The problem with this horse, I think, is the distance. I don't think he wants to get a mile and an eighth. I think they were always uh, worried about this horse's... Uh distant i thought i think they think he has distant limitations but if you're looking at sheets the horse has an eight as a two-year-old not many horses could say that and then the 10 and 12 this year are fine and cox freshened him up he avoided all the uh you know the big races no derby races for him so this is like a fresh horse coming in he wouldn't surprise i don't think he's going to win but he certainly could run second timberlake chad I mean, brad cox said after the arkansas derby that he's off a of derby trail because he doesn't want to go far. That race was a mile and eight. This race is a mile and eight. He was supposed to run on the path day mile. He didn't show up. I, this break isn't a freshening on purpose. I think it's a freshening because something happened. Um, it's not the strongest Haskell of all time. It plays predominantly to speed, although lately his running style has been in the stock instead of the lead. I just don't think he wants to go that far. I agree with John. All right, and then uh, the other uh, two of the other horses are long shots. Just step on it. Who doesn't look like he's got a prayer based on the sheets and C streak, similar to that other uh, horse that we talked about, Jasper's Pride. He has improved lately, but the sheet number, the best he's run, just like Jasper's Pride, is only a twelve. He does have the luxury of the jockey trainer, you know, Mammoth Park deal, where they're like the best, uh, you know. At, well, actually, we know who the jockey is. But the trainer's off to a good start. All right. Uh, John, what's your pick? Either the five or seven, whichever one runs. And underneath, I would put the one and three. So either the five, it's either five with one three or seven one, with one three. If for some reason they both run, the five and the seven, I would give the edge to the five. Okay. Chad? I'm going to go with the one doorknock. Oh. If uh, if you if you don't know which quarterback is going to start on Wednesday of a game on Saturday, oh, they know which quarterback is going to start. I can guarantee you that. Listen, John Velasquez is named on nine horses at Saratoga. I I didn't think this horse was going to run for for a month. The fact that he entered him as a backup plan is concerning to me about mind frame. There's no reason. There's no gamesmanship. There's no reason to even enter to enter fierceness unless you have some kind of a small sliver of a concern about my friends. Correct. And so it, you're picking the one door knock. And what if I'm the one that there's no concern about? That's all. And if mind frame races in this race? Do either of you guys like mind frame if he races in this race? I told you that's my top pick, either the five or seven, whichever pledge a horse goes. And that's the seven. I mean look I was a I was a huge mind frame fan. I'd love to see him, but I think you got a better chance of seeing him run the field of Coolmore and Farm than you do see him running at Mama's Park. That's fierceness. All right, and then I'm going to I'm going to go with the four, and then try to if Mind Frame races, I'll match him up with them. Same thing with uh, fierceness. All right, I'll, I'll be like you. All right. What are we That's, supposed to do if you know one of them are coming out and you like? I know them it's terrible. Them. That's the yeah. industry. That's a story for another it's day. Not good. Uh, that's okay. Was, Top one, there's three horse names in the race, and they all want to lead. It's a rabbit for a rabbit for a rabbit. Okay. Interesting. Uh, by the way, next week, we have some more good races, as you can see here. Del Mar, grade one, Bing Crosby, grade two, San Diego Handicap. You don't want to do the West Virginia. You don't want to do the West Virginia Sylvia Stakes for West Virginia Bridge? All right, guys. No, I'm Everything. not done. And then at Saratoga, grade one, Alfred G. Vanderbilt Handicap, the Jim Dandy and the Seagram Cup, a great, actually, the uh, Jim Dandy's a great two. So there you go. So you got two really big races at Saratoga and Del Mar next week. And we won't be covering the Jim Dandy because it'll be a four horse field. Uh, Thank you, everybody. More Stay excellent news. Well and hit subscribe. Yes. See ya.
Bye. Thank you. Go to sleep, Chad. And that's going to wrap it up. Uh, let me just uh, try to figure out if I can uh, go over these picks again for the two races. I can't be giving you picks for the Patreon race. But the 11th race, John went 6 over 149. Chad went with the 9. I went with the 10 over 79. And then in the Haskell, which was a big screw up uh, because we don't know who the heck's racing as far as the favorites. John's taking the 5 or the 7, whoever races, along with the 1 and the 3. Chad's going with Doorknock. And I am going to go with uh, Timberlake and match him up with either Fierceness or Mindframe. But, you know, I'll just take Timberlake to win and uh, hope for the best. But, hey, last week, again, we went two for two. We're on a nice little hot run right now. Uh, and uh, we'll see if we can keep things going here. Uh, and as John said, yes, subscribe, subscribe, and subscribe. Uh, please subscribe because, uh, again, if you're not on Patreon, and that's perfectly fine, if you want all of those races that are available on Patreon to be here on YouTube, you have to make sure to subscribe because if we get to 1,000 subscribers, that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, also, don't forget you can, you can check out the link in the description for the Discord channel we have. And on Discord, you have an, it's another place basically for questions, uh, comments, but specifically, you know, questions and things of that nature that you can have a better chance of communicating with, uh, with, with John or Chad than you can um, in any other form. But we also definitely hope that you will uh, comment and ask questions here on YouTube. Um, that's also welcomed. So good luck on Saturday. The weather looks fine at Monmouth Park. Uh, we'll see what happens in the Haskell. Uh, real downer, though, man. It's the Haskell. And this is the way that we got to handicap the Haskell. We don't even know which favorite's racing in it. That's a bummer. We'll see you guys next time.